The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Omar Farouk, is calling for a working partnership between federal and state governments to reduce poverty in the country. At a virtual meeting between the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, and Secretaries to the State Government, she explains that effective coordination of poverty eradication programs in the country will deliver on its target if all stakeholders are able to buy into the project. To give us more insight into how the country can reduce poverty rates, we are being joined on the program by Mr. Kenneth Ikenwa, a lecturer from the Department of Business Administration from the University of Lagos. A pleasure having you with us. Thank you, Melinda. Now, let's start with the numbers. Nigeria's poverty rate currently stands at 40.09%, representing about 82.9 million people. And that's according to official data released by the National Bureau on Monday, May the 4th last year. So how best can the country reduce its poverty rate? Okay, I don't think I want to agree with these statistics and this data. I okay. think uh, it's more, but we also have to be very cautious because according to the latest data released by the United Nations Development Program, uh, looking forward towards 2025, we're going to have almost 120 million Nigerians that will be living in multi-dimensional poverty. So we must take this issue seriously. Now, why are we where we are today as a country? I'm a statesman from America once said Nigeria is too rich to be poor, but too poor to be rich. And one of the problems uh, why we are where we are today is because we have been unable to transform our economy from a consumption-based economy, all right? I mean, from a consumption-based economy to a production-based economy. And that translates, you know, in leaps and bounds and affecting the lifestyles of Nigerian people, thereby creating poverty. So as a country and as individuals, you find out that whatever we earn uh, as individuals, we spend mostly on consumption and not savings or investment. As a country, whatever we earn, we find spending mostly on consumption, consumption of imports, rather than on savings and on investments in the Nigerian people, in the Nigerian economy. And, and, and where there's that investment in the economy, there will be more jobs. Because when you don't have jobs, when people cannot have access to skills, have access to credit, then the poverty rate will escalate. Well, why can't we translate our resources into wealth? Nigeria, like I've said, I think on this program a couple of years back, is a bundle of resources. Our inability to translate our natural resources into common wealth for the Nigerian people is simply falling back to what I did say at, at, in, at the first place. We are an extractive economy. So all we find ourselves doing is to extract resources and then ship them off to the West or ship them off for sale. And you see, where extraction is, it becomes a survival of the fittest. It becomes a battle for the survival of the fittest. So as long as we continue to remain an extractive economy, instead of transforming and translating into a productive economy, there will be continuous competition for these resources. And when there, where there is competition and there is no regulation, and even where there is regulation, which is usually to the benefit of a few, you find out that there will be unequitable distribution and allocation of resources. And that translates into serious poverty issues for Nigeria. So how can we change the numbers? <sighs> There's a lot we can do. Um, we have a lot of macroeconomic variables that you know, are predictors of poverty in this country. Now, we're talking about the poverty rate, but we're not talking about some other rates. We're not talking about the illiteracy rate and the literacy rate. If you look at the illiteracy rate of Nigeria, it stands about 45%, meaning that the um, literacy rate stands about 45%. Therefore, there's a correlation between the illiteracy rate of Nigeria, which is 45%, and the poverty rate of Nigeria, which is 40%. The first thing we have to do is to focus on educating our people properly. Then, after we focus on education, because the educational system in Nigeria has been bastardized, and that's why you find a good number of people wanting to leave, you know, to go abroad. And even with the COVID crisis, one of the effects of COVID is brain drain. A lot of young Nigerians, a lot of young academicians, a lot of even older ones are leaving Nigeria or do want to leave Nigeria. Now, don't ask me if I want to leave. <laughs> I'm not leaving. No, this is my country. <laughs> We're going to have to fix the country. But on a more serious note, 
if we cannot stem that tide, if we can't stem that tide, we will still continue to have this problem. So there's so much that we can do. Now we look at the sectors that we have in the country, um, the formal sector, the informal sector, and a very, very important sector that I think this administration is trying at least its best to pay attention to, and that is the digital sector that is emerging. Because one of the fallouts of COVID-19 is that digital economy has been entrenched globally. And that has led to the displacement of skills, the skilling, less displacement of craft, less displacement of jobs. All right. So if we want to address this issue, one of the things we must do is to fund organic growth in Nigeria and pay attention to the real sector. Now, I carried, I carried a research in 2014 with uh, two of my very senior colleagues, and we discovered that right from 1960 to 2014, the most contributing sector to Nigerian economic growth and development has been the agri sector. So we need to pay attention to that. Now, if we get back to the agricultural sector, we, what we are still doing there is still extractive economics. We are not producing, we are not processing, we are not adding value. I'll give you an example. There's an abundance of fish resources in Nigeria. Catfish resources. I don't know if you like to eat catfish. But I love catfish. why and how come is it that with such resources, with such abundance, Nigeria has not been able to metamorphosize that sector of you know the fishery economy, the fishery the, uh, of fishing, and we now start having cat canned catfish made in Nigeria, processed in Nigeria, and exported to the world. So what we we'll do? We we'll just extract this catfish, uh, catfishes. We you know, uh, harvest them, we sell, we consume. At best, what some people are even trying to do now is to roast, roast them and try to export. So we must have a paradigm shift. We must have policies that emphasize us lending to Nigerian people, lending to Nigerian businesses, and driving growth organically, rather than hoping to always get money from abroad. And then when it comes to Nigeria, we can't even have the transparency or accountability with respect to how these monies are being used. So the emphasis must be a shift. Nigeria should stop being an extractive economy, move from being an extractive economy to a productive economy. Nigeria cannot continue to remain a factor-driven economy, we must move to becoming an efficiency-driven economy and then create the foundation for an innovation-driven economy. Until we get that right, I think we'll still remain at the backwaters of the Committee of Nations. Mr. Kenneth Ikenwa, lecturer from the Department of Business Administration, University of Lagos, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on the program. My pleasure.